What's going on internet? IG here again today. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different that I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm going to call it the Nexus Project. So when it comes to Android phones, there are a lot of different manufacturers and a lot of different skins that go onto Android phones. Now, not surprisingly, Android being made by Google is a much more desirable experience when it's on a Nexus device, such as the Nexus 4, the Nexus 5, Nexus 7, Nexus 10, Nexus with really any number after it. So what we're going to try and do today is achieve a Nexus experience or as close as we can get to a Nexus experience without actually rooting the phone or changing the Android distribution that is on the phone. So all of what is covered today is going to be achievable through installing apps and through tweaking the Android system to achieve a somewhat Nexus experience or as close as we can get. So let's get straight down to business. First of all, you're going to want to change the launcher. Now, there are a couple of options that you can do this with. First up, you've got the Nexus 5 launcher. Now, if your device is relatively up to date and it has some pretty decent specs, so if your phone was released in the last year or two, then this might be a good option for you. The Nexus 5 launcher brought out the Google Now support, swiping in from the left hand side, and then it also had a very simplified home screen and also it had larger icons uh, to accommodate for larger touch screens. Now the Nexus 5 launcher was recently released on the Google Play Store for all other Nexus devices and Google Play Edition phones. But for those of us who do not have those devices, you can find the APK or the installer file for it on the web. Now I've put links to everything that I'm going to mention today in the description box below. So definitely dig that out. It is a treasure trove down there. So the first thing you're going to want to do on your phone is to enable installation from unknown sources. Basically this means that for every little app that you download that is a .apk file, you're going to want to load that onto your phone via USB from your computer. Then you are going to want to tick in your settings to allow installations from unknown sources. This will allow your phone to open and install those .apks as if they were .exes or .apps on Macintosh. So you're going to need two components to get the Nexus 5 home screen up and running. You're going to need both an updated Google search and you're also going to need the updated launcher. Both of these APKs can be found in the description box below on the download links provided. Once you've loaded those two onto your phone, tap them and install them. Then when you tap the home key on your phone, you'll be presented with a new option to use the Google Play or the Google Now launcher as opposed to whatever the default was before. All you have to do is click on to make that, make that option as default and you will now have the Google Now launcher as your default home screen. Now the other option is if you do not have an up-to-date device or you do not Want to necessarily use a side loaded APK, check out Nova Launcher. Nova Launcher is an app that you can freely download in the Google Play Store. Uh, again, links to everything down below. And you can use that as a pretty close to vanilla Android launcher. It's pretty close to what's available on the Nexus, just not the Nexus 5. One other note that you might want to include is that the hollow icon set that is available on the Google Play Store is also a very good supplement to the Nova home screen launcher as it'll give you nice icons for everything on your Android phone. Now, the second thing that you wanna to do to achieve a Nexus experience on your Android phone is to replace all of the apps that come default on your Android device with those that are either vanilla Google or pretty close to vanilla Google. So we're gonna go through these apps really quickly and uh, again, links to everything down below. So first of all, we have the KitKat dialer. Now, while the Nexus 5 has a new and improved dialer, it is pretty much exclusive to the Nexus 5. So unfortunately, that's not really available out in the wild for people to go and get. However, the default dialer in the past for Android 4.2 and earlier is, uh, is available and it's also available on the Play Store. So it's easily installable and so we will move on. The camera and the gallery app that is default on Android phones is also available in the Google Play Store in various forms. However, it's very hard to come across the camera app that has the photosphere that a lot of Nexus users enjoy. So there is an APK that I've found and I've linked to down below that has the camera and the gallery app that is pretty close to vanilla. That means you're going to get the photosphere, the panorama, and all of the features that come with the gallery as well. Bear in mind, you do need to be running Android 4.1 and later, I believe. Next up, let's change the look and feel. We've got a wallpaper pack that is the Jelly Bean wallpapers available in the Play Store. And we also have the Holo Locker, and this will take care of your lock screen, changing it from the default, whatever your manufacturer's was, to a more Nexus looking lock screen. 
Now, this one is a free app, but if you want more customization, then it is a dollar or two. But the default has been fine for me in the past. You also have that Sunbeam Live wallpaper that comes with a lot of the Google Play Edition devices, and that is available in the Play Store. And another app that you're going to want to switch out is the Clock. Now the Clock app is actually available on the Google Play Store as KitKat Clock, and again, links to that down below. It gives a nice minimalist clock experience to all of those who have got another stock app on their phone to handle that sort of thing. Alarms, world clocks, etc. And you also have the calculator, which CyanogenMod have put out a version of the calculator that looks pretty close to stock, that once again is available in the Play Store. Finally, third, you're going to want to install a lot of Google services if you want to get close to what the Nexus experience has. That means swapping out things like the keyboard for the Google keyboard, swapping out the calendar for Google Calendar, swapping out your SMS app for Hangouts. Now again, if you don't like Hangouts, then of course there's plenty of third-party apps or you can just keep using the one that comes standard with your phone. And then you can also install things like Quick Office for your office needs and Chrome for your web browsing. And that will get you pretty close to a Nexus experience on a manufactured phone. That sounded stupid. And that will get you pretty close to a Nexus experience on a third-party manufactured phone that isn't a Nexus phone. Let me know if there is anything that I've left out in the comments below. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know either here in the comments section or on Google+, Facebook, or Twitter. And I will try and get around to them. But as you can see, we've gone from a phone, at least in my case, the Sony Xperia Z, that went from this to this. You can see there's quite a difference there, both in the look and functionality of the phone. So I was pretty impressed with the results, especially considering I didn't have to root or do anything uh, very deep down and nerdy with my phone. And of course, if you did wanna go back to the stock experience that came with your device, be it Samsung or Sony or LG, it's very easy to revert back to the stock standard. One thing that you will wanna do in order to make all of the apps that you have installed work by default, then you wanna clear all the defaults in your app settings in the Android settings. That way, when you get a request to open up a photo, you'll be able to choose the new gallery that you've installed as opposed to a third-party app that you've used in the past. Unless, of course, you have a preferable third-party app. So make sure you clear all the defaults for all of the apps that come stock standard on your device. That way you'll be able to make room to make a new default with the Nexus Experience apps that I have mentioned in this video. If this video was helpful for you, then definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. I will see you all again in the very near future. Thank you for watching. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.